crap, guys. You see, the thing is, is I have this awesome idea for a portrait tip video that I want to share with you, except I don't have any of my friends here with me to do it with and to help explain these tips. Oh my god. <laughs> that, was, that was funny. Oh my god. Keep it up. Ooh. Okay, so I actually, I lied. My friends are here. And I was gonna do some magic trick, but it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. So, we're gonna dive into these portrait tips. Let's do it. Let's have fun. All right guys, real quick, on our way to the first portrait photography tip, I want to stop and just tell you a little bit about these two people that are in this video behind me. These two are my good friends, Eliza and Mark. Mark is an extremely good, talented photographer in the Boston area. He's about to move out to LA in the next week and a half or so. Um, so super excited for him and to see all the progress that he's gonna make out in LA. That's gonna be huge for him. As well as Eliza, she's killing it as far as modeling goes in the Boston area. Her and I have worked together on multiple shoots and I'll link all their work, both their work, down in this description below this video for you guys to check out. But I just wanted to chime in real quick and tell you guys that. So the first tip that I'm gonna give you guys is how do you guys get in a creative zone or a creative workflow? How do you come up with a theme for the photo shoot? Well, the first thing I do is I talk to the model. We kind of discuss a game plan for an overall theme for what we want to go with, whether it's futuristic, um, something old school, something really beachy, something um, really farmy, something green, yellow, it doesn't really matter. Whatever we kind of choose as a thought process, we start taking that route and start going through Pinterest, start going through other photographers on Instagram that have similar styles, um, even look at magazines, movies, we get inspiration from music. It could be anything that sparks your inspiration. It's what you do with that inspiration in that trail after that, that you, leads you to a result that is, is worth it. Right, because you can get any theme you want, you can get the coolest theme in the world, but it's the execution of that theme. It's how you go and you act and you relate with the model and have fun with it. And how you express yourself is how you're going to get a good result with finding a theme, finding a good idea for your photo shoot. For tip number two, whenever models are running late or you show up to the location and it's not what you expected, um, for the first part of that question, I would say if the model is running late, to go ahead and scout out the location while you're there. Find out what spots and like what angles you're wanting to capture and how you can get the most of the location while you're waiting for the model. Um, and just have them send you update texts about where they are just so you can be prepared to go meet them when they arrive and you can like go find them. And then for the second part of that question, um, if the location isn't what you were expecting, when you're planning out your location, go ahead and find a spot where it is near another location. That way you know you have a plan B just in case you arrive and the light isn't what it what you thought it would be or maybe that the grass is dead or you know the background doesn't look too nice. So always have a plan B when you're planning ahead of time. Alright guys and for tip number three Tip number three is what do you do if you have a crappy location to shoot in? You live in a spot that's maybe not so fun. Well, what I would suggest if you don't have mountains or a city to go into and explore is take your model, go out and walk around and force yourself to take photos in locations that you might not think originally are gonna work. And you'll find out that through the different lighting situations and different colors in the background that you can get really any location to match the way and create the style that you're looking to create. So don't limit yourself based off your location. Go out there and practice and shoot in those crappy locations because you're going to be forced to become a better photographer. So it's all for the good. So for tip number four, when you're trying to have your model feel more comfortable around you, I usually start off by asking them questions that have nothing to do with modeling or photography at all because I feel like the more you try to go out of your way to get to know them personally, um, for example, if they do sports, if they're into drama or singing or any sort of thing like that, I think trying to find that common ground is very important because it just takes your mind off of what you're doing in the moment and it makes it more about getting to know somebody. Um, and then usually when we're walking around downtown, I try to wait at least a good 10 minutes before I start pulling my camera out and shooting just so we can like walk together and kind of just like make eye contact and get that you know connection between each other and then we start shooting the first 10 minutes are usually the most hardest because you're still trying to like get that connection going but after 10 minutes it's probably going to be pretty smooth from there and you guys can just keep talking about whatever it is that you guys have in common that's not related to photography or modeling 
So we're here at tip number five, and that is how do you shoot or know what the best angles are for your model when taking portrait shots? Well, what I like to do is I like to start off by taking a quick shot straight on and then have them turn to the left and have them turn to the right. And what this allows me to do is see what side is gonna work best for them. You don't have to tell them that you're doing this. You can just do this and have them think that you're warming up with taking photos or whatever it is, but this gets you kind of on the right mindset for what side of their face is gonna work out. And then from there, what I like to do is either shoot a little bit higher than their eye level to give their jawline and their cheekbone a nice definition, especially if they tilt their head to one side or the other, or maybe they give a body tilt from 45 degrees to 45 degrees on each side, or I shoot really low and make their legs seem super long, longer than they even are. Even if they're short people, you can make them seem a lot taller based off how low you shoot, especially with a wide angle. So definitely start off small with small movements, see what side is gonna work best, and from there, build off that and work off it slowly, confidently, and don't worry about the result, just worry about practicing. So for the final tip, when is the best time to shoot portraits? For me personally, I really enjoy shooting portraits during sunset hours. I really like having that golden look to the model's face. Um, and I just feel like it is very nice to shoot at golden hour, but it's also one of those things where you have to work really fast. So if you are somebody who likes to take your time, I would strongly recommend that you do early morning, like sunrise. Um, you can also get some really cool lighting during sunrise. Or if you want to shoot during the day and really take advantage of that harsh lighting, you can really make some like cool, interesting portraits. Especially Especially if you are shooting more fashion stuff, I do feel like harsh lighting is the way to go because um, soft lighting is more for portrait style, but I think fashion is more about that harsh lighting. So. so that wraps it up for today's shoot, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I want to thank Eliza and Mark for coming out and helping me with this video as well. What I want you to take away from this is everything that we said, take it with a grain of salt, right? Every artist does things differently in their own way. Mark and I learned separate ways, however, we each developed our styles over time through practice. I think practice is probably the main thing you wanna pull away from every single tip or discussion that we had talked about today. Just practice, guys. Just do your best, go out and shoot as much as you can and enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, don't do it. But that wraps it up. Follow these guys. I'm gonna link all their stuff down below in the description. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.